Really? You used to be afraid of spiders. What do you have on yeah, you now? Yeah, a spider. Whoa. Hold still once. You got, oh, beautiful jumper. Hello friends, I would like to share with you today, well, it's Rebecca's favorite green, I would say, and it's a really special plant out here. Now this one is a native to North America, so if you're over in Europe, this will not be out in your woods, but it's a fun one to learn about anyway, and if you're in Europe, you do have a very closely related species. So let's go meet this one. Most of you are probably familiar with stinging nettle. Now, this is the one that you can find over in Europe as well. But down here, there's another nettle growing. This one doesn't really look the same. It has a few superficial similarities. But once we take a closer look, we're going to see that, well, this is actually in a different genus than the stinging nettle. Here's stinging nettle with its opposite leaves. And these long, almost lancelet leaves. Very sharp teeth. But when we come back down here to the wood nettle, we don't have that opposite branching. And again, these broad leaves. Now, both of these do have stings. And I was reading recently a really fascinating article that was saying that these stingers are silica that has been purified. In other words, it's basically glass. And it's a mystery currently how the plants manufacture that pure silica. We humans do it with heat, but that's the only way we've been able to do it. And of course, the plants are not applying heat. They are somehow doing it by other means. And when you get up close with the wood nettle, those are some formidable spikes. They are larger and more packed with their venom than the stinging nettle. That's why I teasingly call this the wild spinach of doom because, wow, those stingers, the stings, they really pack a bite. If you haven't felt this before, it's sort of a strange mixture between pain and itching. I wouldn't quite call it pain. I wouldn't quite call it itching, but it can drive you mad. But here's the neat thing. When these are young, their stingers are still soft. They aren't stingy yet. Stinging nettle, even when they're little teeny stinging nettles, they will bite you. But these guys won't. So I can reach up, I can find the tender point where it's still tender, and pick this. And this is an incredible vegetable. These stems have just a nice, crunch tenderness to them that when I steam these or put them into any dish, there's going to be not only the yumminess of the greens themselves, but that slight more textural effect that you get from those stems. Now, Rebecca and I use this anywhere we'd use spinach in our cooking, and that's why we sometimes call it a wild spinach of doom. We use it in Oh, any kind, of, let's say you're gonna make a lasagna, a soup, a stew, you're gonna make horta, do a quiche, anywhere that you would use cooked spinach, these guys are gonna go in here. And I'll say cooked, because although you saw me nibbling on it raw, these are really best to cook. And the reason is, even when they're young, once in a while, I won't lie, they'll bite you a little bit. But as soon as you apply some heat to the stinging nettle or the wood nettle, what's gonna happen is those stingers and the toxin, they lose all their oomph. And you can eat those without any fear of being stung. Another great thing about these is that although like any green, they cook down, they don't cook down that much. So when you gather a whole bunch of these and you come home, you're still gonna have a whole bunch of greens. While you're, you're familiar with a lot of other greens, 
you gather tons and tons in them, it cooks down to something that you could fit in the palm of your hand. This is not like that. You're gonna get a lot of bulk for your effort. And then there's the flavor. These guys are more delicate than the stinging nettle. If you've had stinging nettle before, you know that it has a really rich, robust flavor. This has a delicious flavor, but not quite as robust. So it's not going to take over a recipe at all. It's just gonna be an addition. Again, a lot like spinach. And finally, this wouldn't be Rewild University unless we talked about how you can torture yourself with these in some way. And that is one of the last great, wonderful things. Ah, besides one other thing about the wood nettle. And that is that when it does sting you, whether you do this intentionally or it just happens during gathering, this is a chance to experience the sensation for what it is. That sensation that I tried to describe it can be horrible, but like so many things in life that it's very easy to react negatively to, we also have the power to transform that experience so that we just feel the sensation, we get curious about it, and when we actually feel it, we, well, we have this chance to experience the actual sensation and then our mind layering on resistance and how the combination of those two things creates a negative experience. Not just the sensation alone. If we just feel the sensation as it is, it's not that negative. In fact, you could even find that it's an interesting sensation. It's the resistance that we layer on, that mental resistance, that turns it into pain, or negativity. This is the brown thrasher talking up here. Listen for a moment. I feel like they never repeat their little phrase. It's one different thing after another. It's always fascinating. I've heard some bird folks say that they actually do have a limited number of phrases, but it's incredible. Hopefully he'll keep talking in the background and you can hear his various sounds going on as I finish up here. That very last thing I was talking about is that the wood nettle is one of my favorite cordage materials. I did a video on it way back when, but in the winter, when those dried stalks are sticking up out of the snow, it makes a wonderful cordage material. It's really easy to strip the cordage off. So it's a fun one to use for children or other people that are just being introduced to cordage because you don't have to do a lot of processing to get that cordage off. All right, my friends, tell me if you've ever tasted wood nettle or used it, or if this is a new plant for you. And if you're not familiar with it, and it might be out in your woodlands, so it's, you're gonna find it in woods, lowland swampy areas and you're usually going to find it in abundance go out find it try it and let me know what you think and finally if you have no chance of trying the wood nettle say you're over in europe tell me about a plant that you eat that also has a dark side that side of doom has something negative about it it's toxic sometimes or it has a bite or Something else that turns people away from it, but for you, it's a wonderful plant that you use in your life. All right, my friends, love to you all. Talk with you in the comments.